At last. That stench of stale grease about you reminds me too much of my old job. You worked as a waiter? I was a chef. And not in any old kitchen. At the maximum security penitentiary on Gore Island. Can't think of a better way to do time. And how do you think I met Alphonse? Playing golf? Alphonse? On the subject of cooking, I know your blueberry pie had an extra something. I still don't know what. Alphonse? So what now? You got a plan? Take a look around, in case there's a rear exit. I'll take the main door. My pleasure. The fact that a criminal like him can hang up his shingle in broad daylight says a lot about Santa Esperanza. Someone took out sections of the fence. Odd. Interesting taste. Been centuries since a gardener visited this house. Maybe Baccarini's business isn't going too well. Baccarini? Carlo Baccarini? Nothing of interest out back. Sorry. You better come see this, Mr. Ness. What is it? I don't know how to describe it. Is that our man? Baccarini. My God. We have to find out who did this, and why. Let's go. You're the detective, Mr. Ness. Besides, Alphonse will want to see this. I'll be right back. All right. I have to establish how Baccarini died. Maybe the body parts can shed some light on the motive. Holy Christ, what the hell are we up against? His eyes were pulled clean out of their sockets. Whoever did this, it wasn't their first time. And if they committed any other murders like this, it's likely that the police found some of the bodies. I must remember to ask Alice. His teeth were all pulled out before he was killed. The buildup of blood inside his mouth speaks for itself. This isn't a cut, it's a tear. His hands were ripped off. Who has that kind of strength? Once he got stuck in there, looks like the bottom of a glass.
pity he won't last till Christmas, because he'd almost pass for a tree. There's no doubt the murderer took his time. Takes a strong man to tear that out, or several. stayed in my diner. I know why his teeth were pulled out, more or less. What is that? Looks like a ritual. What was Baccarini mixed up in? for a forger like Baccarini. Are there sufficient reasons to believe that when the murderer attacked Baccarini, there was someone else in the house? The first possibility to be ruled out is that the car belonged to Baccarini. Vermont plates. Someone drove a long way. Let's take a look in the glove compartment. Bingo! A man's cigarette case. side of the corridor and ends next to the body. He was attacked in the other room and dragged to the hall. Hmm. The evidence suggests that the events began in the lounge. How did Baccarini encounter his murderer? Whatever 
crushed the table must have been really heavy. Or maybe it was thrown extremely hard. wristwatch without unfastening it, or fastens the strap again after taking it off. Blood. Blood everywhere. Did it break during the struggle, or was it already broken? was opened recently. Smells of whiskey. those things up like caviar. Like a true bachelor, he should have put these into soak. Hours of scraping to get them clean. Although at this stage, I don't think Baccarini's too worried about that. Four glasses. Two of water, two of wine. I've always been a whiskey man. But I know a good wine when I see one. Leftover lasagna. And it looks good. Why is it that two out of three Italian gangsters are great cooks? I'll never understand what the deal is with them and cooking. The plates and the glasses leave no room for doubt. Baccarini had company for dinner. one. Hmm. It's shut from the inside. It opens onto the same room as the jammed door in the corridor.
Maybe the body parts can shed some light on the motive. Maybe the body parts can shed some light on the motive. The lamp, torn off its brackets and blocking the stairs. Maybe the body parts can shed some light on the motive. The murderer tore Baccarini's hands off. Maybe the body parts can shed some light on the motive. A car with Vermont plates. The initials OB on a cigarette case. One, it has Vermont plates. Two, it's too luxurious for a criminal of his standing. Three, the initials on the cigarette case don't match his name. The next possibility that needs to be ruled out is that the car was stolen. There should be evidence that there was someone else in the house. Dirty plates, glasses, and silverware from a dinner for two. The dirty dishes and glasses prove that Baccarini ate lasagna with one other person. Was Baccarini's guest still in the house when the murderer showed up? A door in the corridor jammed shut. It opens onto the same room as the locked door in the kitchen. Was Baccarini's guest still in the house when the murderer showed up? The lamp, torn off its brackets and blocking the stairs. How did Baccarini encounter his murderer? Pieces of glass from the window in the hall found inside the house. A broken whiskey glass found in the dining room. A pistol fully loaded. Baccarini's teeth were all pulled out. What looks like the bottom. A door in the kitchen. Not a broken whiskey glass. An open bottle of whiskey. I'd say Baccarini was drinking in the dining room when his assailant burst in through the window. Baccarini pulled his gun, but the murderer disarmed him before he could shoot. Where did the torture begin? Two pools of blood, one on either side of the dining room table. A broken table, scratched and covered in blood. A blood-stained wristwatch, with a glass the blood stains show that the murderer began to torture Baccarini on the dining table itself. That was where his hands were torn off. As a result, his wristwatch fell to the ground. How did the body reach its current position? The trail of blood from the dining room to the hall.
The lamp, torn off its bracket, Baccarini, already minus hands, was dragged into the hall, where the murderer used the brackets of the lamp to complete his macabre diorama. A teaspoon stained with a broken whiskey glass found in the dining room. Some kind of symbol drawn. A sick altar. A door in the corridor. What looks like the bottom of a broken glass it seems clear that Baccarini and his guest were drinking when the murderer took them by surprise. The real question is. What happened to the witness? Did they escape? Did the murderer take them? Or are they still in the house? A door in the corridor jammed shut. It opened a door in the kitchen, locked from the inside. One locked door could be a coincidence, but two locked doors which open onto the same room can't be. Either I'm completely wrong, or the witness is in that room. But I need Milton to open one of those doors. A sick altar of human flesh. Baccarini's teeth were all pulled out, hands ripped off, teeth torn out. I guess I'll have to rule out criminal intent or a personal angle. Baccarini's eyes still haven't shown up. What if I look for whatever was used to remove them? A teaspoon stained with blood and some kind of st a mixture of sticky liquid and blood can only mean one thing. The spoon was used to remove Baccarini's eyes. The mutilations and the disappearance of his eyes suggest two possible motives. Psychopathy or cultist fanaticism. Which is it? Some kind of symbol drawn in blood. A sick altar of human flesh. Although I don't know the origin of the symbol in the bathroom and the altar of flesh and teeth, I'd say the motive was some kind of occult religion. The big question is, who did it? Mr. Ness, can you open the door for me? It was open. Why did you ring? I thought I should use the doorbell, so I wouldn't startle you. I didn't notice there was a doorbell. Says the man Milton had left in charge of an important investigation. So... What can you tell me to restore my faith in you as a detective? What is that? Not a good start. It's a camera, so Alphonse can see all this. All right. Follow me. Baccarini had company for dinner. Someone from Vermont with the initials OB. Someone whose social status was a lot higher, but who was on the same side of the law. He served lasagna, and after clearing away the dishes, they opened a bottle of whiskey in the dining room. That was when the murderer burst in on them, coming through the window which he broke with his own body weight. Baccarini, or maybe his guest, pulled a gun, but it was a waste of time. The murderer was so fast, he was disarmed before he could fire. He focused his attention on Baccarini, totally ignoring the guest, and lifted him up into the air. He then threw him against the dining room table so hard that one of the glasses of whiskey was embedded in Baccarini's back. He span around, clawing at the table, and immediately afterwards the murderer ripped off his hands. I have no idea how he did it, but all the evidence suggests he just pulled. Blood sprayed everywhere. The wristwatch fell to the ground. He dragged him through the corridor into the hall. He tore down the lamp, hung him from the brackets, and stabbed steel rods through his body. He skewered him on the iron bars, possibly taken from the fence outside, and pulled out his teeth one by one. Finally, he scooped out his eyes with a teaspoon. Baccarini must have been dead when the murderer went to the bathroom with his hands and his teeth. There, he arranged them to make an altar, weaving the fingers together and placing the teeth inside. Next, he painted something on the wall in blood, 
A symbol which I don't recognize, but which could have some kind of ritualistic significance. When he'd finished his artwork, he left. I don't know what he did with the eyes. You're telling me that someone did all this on with a teaspoon? More or less. And you worked all this out on your own some, just by looking? More or less. I don't know which of the two of you scares me more. Wait a second. What about the guest? Right. Come with me. Nothing. Turns out Mr. Untouchable isn't infallible. But you were close. Congratulations. This must be Baccarini's office. Let's take a quick look around. All yours. You're at a crime scene, and you sit down to read? Titus Andronicus. One of the actors on the Hindenburg lent it to me. They're performing it soon. You couldn't ask for more appropriate reading material. Murder, mutilation, torture. <laughs> Shakespeare's got it all. We've lost the only lead we had to help us find Sophia Capone. You think Baccarini's murder could be related? Maybe. It's hard to say. Why'd you go to jail? For murder, but... You didn't do it, of course. Of course I did it, but I didn't intend to. Jesus, there's at least a million dollars here. Mm-hmm. Baccarini's? I'd be surprised. Probably his guests, and I doubt it was to pay Baccarini for his services. None of his forgeries are worth that much. right? I have to take the kids to school tomorrow. I don't think this is some loving divorced daddy, Milton. Ah, I take back what I just said. The driver's license of one John Martinson and Osmond Burke. OB. Hmm. Do we know him? The eldest son of the richest family in Vermont, convicted rapist. He was arrested thanks to the testimony of his father, who wound up disinheriting him. He escaped from prison last week. He broke into the family home and slit the throats of all his relatives one by one, opened the safe, and got away with a fortune. Uh, they don't make jails like they used to. All starting to add up, isn't it? Get out! 
coming back. Him! The monster! The guy who killed Baccarini? Hey, he was a monster! Well, get your hands off me, Negro! What was he like? Describe him for me. I, he was a monster. Red and black. I mean, his head reached the ceiling. He, he tore off his hands with his claws! It was a monster! A monster! Should I hit him again? Burke, shut up. You're Osmond Burke, right? Yeah, yeah, yes. Good. Now pay attention, Burke, because I have a question for you. Who wrote this note? Uh, Nikolai Ivankov. Rings a bell. One of Capone's right-hand men 20 years ago. What does this stuff about kids mean? I, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> Calm down, Burke. You were going to meet up with him, right? Yes, uh, yeah, at the docks, uh, uh, birth 42, right, right next to where, um, where, where the uh, Allig Alligator 3 is moored. So what's the meetup time? Uh, t tomorrow, tomorrow at, uh, uh, tomorrow, 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 tomorrow noon, tomorrow, tomorrow. Tomorrow? No, it's going to be tonight. <laughs> ah! oh. <sighs> Don't get too comfortable. We'll be there in no time. The cops in Santa Esperanza aren't as straight as the cops in Vermont. Even so, I think they'll be delighted to see you at the station. I'm afraid not, Mr. Ness. I have to take him to Alphonse. Out of the question. I know his temper. He'll beat him to a pulp. Listen, if the missing girl was your granddaughter, you wouldn't forgive me if I didn't let you see the only suspect who could lead us to her. Okay. Ah, shucks. What? I thought that bloodbath would cover up the smell of stale grease. I was wrong. <laughs>